There was a time when simply going fast was all that was required of what we call sports cars. Not anymore, it seems. Today, a sports car needs to satisfy all our cravings, not just for speed, but for comfort, a sense of style, convenience, practicality, and above all, luxury. Would any of these cars be any worse for not being decorated with bits of dead animals and trees or with offcuts from racing cars? I'm not so certain. BMW 3 Series you will see every day. Not that it makes the M3 any less desirable, inside or out. While the Jaguar XKRS interior would not be out of place in an 18th century costume drama. But if rarity is in itself a luxury, try the Maserati Gran Turismo with its Ferrari-built V8 or the rare and underrated exercise in beating the Germans at their own game that is the Lexus ISF. Any idiot can build a supercar. Find a giant engine, glue a load of carbon fibre to the outside, give it a silly name and sell it for a million quid. No need to worry about boot space or comfort or whether the aircon works. But a car that's good to drive and that you can use every day, that's as challenging as building a fighter jet that's also easy to park in a multi-storey. But when it goes right, well, you end up with something amazingly special. Something like the BMW M3, one of the very best fast cars of recent years. And don't forget Mazda's RX-7, the Toyota Supra, the original Skyline GTR, provided that is they haven't been uh, improved by a spotty 17-year-old in a daft hat. These, I'm pleased to say, haven't. These are the barroom crooners of the supercar world. Clothed in something approaching more like a classic tuxedo than something from the catwalk. And so, just that little bit more every day. But no less appealing for that. Even its name, California, tells you all you need to know about Ferrari's easy driving car. This is a car in which to enjoy the sunshine, to spend rather more time enjoying the scenery passing by than counting down the meters to the next braking point. The AMG version of the Mercedes SLK and the BMW Z4 S-Drive have no rear seats but do have engines of impeccable pedigree and rather nifty folding steel roofs. Not as rare as the Ferrari may be, but no less exciting. The Audi TT RS, meanwhile, is neither rare nor a convertible. It is, however, with its 2.5-litre, five-cylinder rally quattro engine and four-wheel drive, unquestionably exciting, but only when you want it to be which is what this group is all about. Although we are calling this group executive, these are not the cars driving far too close to the back of your car in the fast lane. Oh no, this lot are long gone. What started out as a blue collar thing in the United States of America, putting ridiculously large engines in otherwise ordinary saloon cars, has become a white collar pursuit in Europe and nobody does it better than BMW in its motorsports division and Audi with its four-wheel drive RS cars. Those BMWs feature, of course, completely unnecessary V8 engines. The 2003 example M5 had a 5-litre V8, while the more recent 2012 model also has a V8, only this one is smaller and has turbochargers, two of them. Likewise, the Audis, the raffish RS5 with its clean air breathing 4.2 litre V8 and the rakish RS7 with its twin turbo V8. The turbos are there to save the planet, apparently. If you've tried the motley collection of American muscle cars from the 1980s and 90s in the other group, fast but flawed cars developed to put a shine on otherwise forgettable models, you'll know by now that sometimes more power isn't always enough. The latest breed of muscle car proves, however, that thankfully, it usually is. The 2007 Shelby GT500 produces exactly 500 brake horsepower and drives better than a car costing less than $50,000 has any right to. Remarkably, the Mustang has rivals, and two of them are here. The Chevy Camaro ZL1 with its 580 brake horsepower V8 and the Dodge Challenger SRT8 392 with its throwback cubic inches badge. 
In modern money, that's 6.4 litres. Drive them. Drive them all and take comfort in the knowledge that there are people out there, besides Clarkson, who will never believe you can have enough power. Muscle cars were once engineered to make ordinary cars go faster. Like men once went to the gym to make themselves go faster. These days, men who spend time in the gym and those shops where they sell milkshakes that make you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger are not doing it because they want to be better at sports, are they? They're doing it because they want their clothes to look too small for them. These muscle cars are more like modern muscle men, bulging in all the right places, but not necessarily any more sporting. The legendary Buick Regal GNX was at least NASCAR derived and McLaren engineered but that didn't stop it having some interesting habits when driven hard. The 1993 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra, meanwhile, was a last-ditch attempt to bolt on some credibility and some speed to the generally forgettable third-generation Mustang. I'm not saying the cars are slow, they're not, or unexciting, they're not. It's just that, like that man with the power shake, they may be a bit embarrassing to be seen out with. 